If you are a new grad looking for an internship or a full-time position, or you know someone who's currently in the process of looking for a new job, then this video is for you. I'm gonna talk about some of the top mistakes that I see people commit when they are looking for a new position. And this is extremely critical because if you are doing any of these mistakes today, chances are your resume is not getting picked up by the right people and you're not getting the opportunity that you deserve. The top mistake that I see today from people trying to get into a software engineering industry for the first time is that they focus too much on their resume. What I mean specifically by that is they focus on the formatting, the color, the fonts, the sizes, the layout of the resume, rather than the actual meat, the content of the resume itself. Now, as you might be aware, in today's world, trying to be a software engineer is a highly competitive industry. There were a lot of people applying to be software engineers, and I think that the focus should not be as much on the formatting of the resume, but instead, more focus should be put into the actual content of it. So what that means specifically is pick up projects, work on interesting site projects, and get your technical chops down. When you have more interesting projects that you've worked on or experience, that makes you a much, much stronger, much more attractive as a candidate. I've seen a lot of that happen, especially with newer fresh grads coming out of college when they've worked only on school projects and haven't had a lot of internship or practical experience. And they try to make up for that with inserting content about how they have been the president of a social club or the treasurer for a cooking club. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think those are bad experience, so to speak, but if you're trying to apply as a software engineer, what's most important here is the technical content. People want to see your technical skills. Can you write code? Can you deliver? Can you get stuff done? Those are the actual things that people care about, and I think it would do you good if you actually focus on the content of your resume instead. Now, the second most common mistake I see is that people spend too much time on tutorials with no clear goals in mind. What I mean by that is I see people taking on, on Udemy, for example, free courses, and they start off really strongly learning about syntax, learning about how to set up a new framework, for example, but usually what happens there is about two, three weeks into the program, they give up. They have learned the syntax of the language, they have learned how to set up the framework, but they haven't actually worked on anything substantial or anything interesting with the knowledge that they have gained. Now, that is a problem because what happens now is that you have a lot of fringe knowledge, but you haven't been able to take that knowledge and apply. So that is what we call in the industry applied knowledge, applied intelligence. Are you able to take something, for example, your knowledge about Python, and can you apply that to solve a problem? If you're able to do that, then that shows that you have, one, you have the ability to get things done. Two, you have the ability to pick up new concepts, new ideas really quickly. Three, you're able to take that new concept and apply that to a problem and solve that. When you combine those things together, what ends up happening here is you present yourself as a really holistic, technical-oriented problem solver. And that's what a lot of companies are interested in looking for. That's the cream of the crop, the 10x engineer, the unicorn that companies are looking for. The third mistake that I see is a lot of people spend a lot of time making up a great looking resume but they only apply to the companies that they have heard of, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, all the top brand name companies. But the problem there is that there's only a very limited set of companies like that. The reason that they are top in the industry is because they are working on a lot of really interesting projects. 
They have a lot of really smart people working there. Therefore, they're considered top in their industry. So what ends up happening is you have a very limited set of openings competed away by a large pool of applicants from all over the world. Now, the chances of getting an interview or even landing a job becomes extremely thin for the average Joe. So my recommendation there is instead of just focusing on those top tech companies, open up your eyes and look across, you know, not just the top tech companies, but also startups, mid-sized companies, any company that is willing to give you an opportunity to interview and give you a chance to join them and learn. I think that's a great way of bootstrapping yourself, right? Get your foot over the door, learn, get into the software engineering industry first. It doesn't really matter how much you get paid initially or what the title of the position really is because once you get in there and you can learn, right? Get into that atmosphere and figure it out for yourself if you want to be a software engineer. After a couple of years of learning, then you can get better and then apply for top tech companies again, right? Personal story here is that's what I did exactly. When I graduated from college, I didn't have any of those top tier companies offering me a job. So what ended up happening was I wrote a script, I applied to all the different companies that I could think of, and finally a startup took a gamble on me and gave me a job. So from there, I picked up and learned everything that I could. Three years later, I applied to a lot of companies and finally landed my job at Twitter. If you're interested to learn more about my story, I added a link up top and also in the description below so that you can watch more of how I did that, what were the process and how I prepared for my job interview. And then the fourth most common mistake that I see is that people sometimes apply to jobs that they're not qualified for. Now you might think that this is contrary to my previous point, but hear me out here. If you're a software engineer and you're trying to apply for a machine learning position, ideally what you should have on your resume here is some machine learning practical experience. Either you have taken some internship or you have done some of machine learning related experience in your current job. Otherwise, I think it's gonna be a huge stretch to apply for a position in which you don't have any practical experience or any professional education in. So from a lot of resumes that I see, especially from fresh graduates, is that they have worked on some machine learning, some data science, and some software engineering, and they put all of that experience without filtering out, without actually catering their resume to the specific position that they were interested in applying for. And then they sent that out to all the different companies that they can think of. So what actually ends up happening is recruiters, hiring managers, they look at the resume and they struggle to figure out how this person actually fits in with the opening that they have. So that's again a problem. My recommendation in this case is figure out, okay, what are the skill sets that you have? What are your strengths? And how you can demonstrate that in your resume? And then try to tie that back, okay, to the position, to the opening that they have. If you're applying for a software engineering position, look at your resume and then be honest with yourself. If you were a hiring manager, do you think that your resume actually matches up with the position, with the opening? If it is not, then you need to figure out, okay, where's that gap? How can you close that gap? If it is, then perfect. You know, send out your resume, get some referrals, and get that job you deserve. All right, so those are some of the top mistakes I've seen from people trying to get into software engineering industry. If you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button and that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.